challenge that we did here was to record a live multi-instrument jazz band in their hall, and then how we're gonna make it sound like an authentic 60s recording, you know? That was the challenge. When we came down and we got to meet with the band in their studio, they played this tune. It was just a little more funky, had, had that energy, had that call and response. So that's why I think, you know, we went with this tune. It's jazz, but it's funky. I think that's what I was really attracted to by the song. The advice I got was just really focus on the band and the band being tight, you know, and getting good takes. You know, don't be over technical about it. Really focus on the, the energy of the band. Everything else will fall into place. One of the, the, the great things about being the Preservation Hall band is we're an improvising band. So every time we play a song, it, it takes on a new shape and a new form and like it's never the same twice and the beautiful thing about that is you have to be focused and ready to capture the take because there's no going back and redoing anything in a lot of popular music there's not as much live recording in terms of the entire band i think the challenge of this was miking a multi-instrument group you know especially with horns because horns tend to be in everything you know, when you're recording live, you know, the drums are coming through every track and the horns are coming through every track. So you have to have this great room sound to capture everything. So I think right from the door, we had a solid plan, especially with the horns and vocals. So, you know, have a horn mic and then have some overhead to catch the vocal stuff. And the drums sounded great. We, we mic'd the drums with one mic and they, it sounded amazing. And so we incorporated ribbon mics in, in our process to, to really be true to what would have been done in the 60s. The Apollo was the interface that we're using, obviously. One of the great things about the Apollo is the fact that you can put things on the way in. That's why, you know, we put the 610 in the unison slot on the front end of going in. You know, it's like having a 610 console. Um, oh, one of the things we did, we did use a Fairchild. It's like having 10 Fairchilds at your disposal. I mean, that's amazing. And Apollo, you know, it did, it, it did its job. It did its job, sounds great. I mean, the band was blown away. So during playback, the band commented on that, wow, this already seems like it's, you know, that the mixing process already started. And, you know, I was sort of explaining to them about console and the advantages of console because it is almost like mixing as you're recording and as you're going. Um, you know, some of the best engineers I know talk about that process that as they're recording, they're already, you know, getting the mix and console really allows you to do that. To be able to track a song and then immediately step behind the speaker and hear it back to you at that quality is unbelievable. The process usually isn't that quick. Well, Apollo's just been such a reliable tool. For me, it's like my Swiss Army knife. And I really want everything I do to sound great and try to sound amazing. So it goes around the world with me and it's, you know, whether I'm recording in my hotel room or I'm in the studio, it always sounds great. You know, people are like, you did that in your hotel room? And I'm like, yeah. Whether you're a musician or you're a producer or you're producing yourself or whatever the case is you're producing, you have to understand the tools that are at your disposal and know them well, you know, but try things. Because the way you learn how to use things is really through trial and error, you know. Really, you have to be hands-on. There's no just stepping in and just getting it, right? You have to be hands-on, you know, and eventually you, you, your sound, sound will get better and better and better. 